Currently I've got a 4BTV vertical and a half size G5RV. But what is best for you? It could be something totally different. Well hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me on the Waters and Stanton video channel. I've done a couple of videos recently about antenna propagation and had some interesting uh, comments. You know I don't quite know why it is but a lot of the knowledge on antennas seems to come from America, the USA. All the best antenna books seem to come from the USA and all the well I don't say all but a lot of the interesting articles about antenna theory and propagation comes from the USA so um, I do thoroughly enjoy reading them but I'm not quite sure why it, uh, it tends to come from the USA but there we are it does um, I had a uh, an interesting uh, message uh, or email from Don N4DJ if you're watching Don many thanks for that he's enclosed some uh, documents and uh, very interesting to read actually and uh, he highlights the fact that uh, you know the, the Brewster angle was known many, many years ago, and it seems the old timers know all about it. <laughs> I'm one of them. Um, but it's not so common knowledge amongst the newcomers. I'm not quite sure why that is, um, because it is mentioned in uh, the uh, classic antenna books, but it seems to have fallen out of, uh, or say off the shelf. It's, it's, that information doesn't seem to be currently um, known by the more recent hams, <coughs> which is a shame really because you do get some some conflicting um, comments and some uh, claims about antenna uh, angles of radiation and so forth. Anyway, thanks Don for that, much appreciated. A quick shout out for our website and for our shop. We carry a wide range of antennas, HF through to VHF and UHF as well as all the accessories. If you want to build your antenna, we've got coax cable, we've got ropes, we've got masts, etc. So it's worth checking our website, having a browse, and I'm sure you'll find all the items you need to make your own antenna, already made antennas from Hustler, High Gain, etc, etc. So take a look at our website, or better still, visit our shop if you're in the area. And we're going to talk about, in this short video, what is the best HF antenna for you? Now, it may seem strange, but the best antenna for you is not necessarily the best antenna. Because you have to make do with what you can put up. And in fact, it may even be that the best antenna for you could be fitted into your garden, but it's not the best antenna. And you might think, well, I'm talking a lot of rubbish, isn't it? So I would expand on that. First of all, though, thanks for all the uh, input on the, 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 uh, the uh, subject of antennas. And uh, certainly it's uh, very interesting to read all your comments. Now, some of the interesting comments that I've had um, is that Horizontal antennas are better than vertical antennas in a lot of uh, situations. And, uh, well, I suppose I would go along with that to some extent. I've, the whole of my ham radio life, which is 60, what, 64 years, um, I've always had a vertical antenna, and I've usually had a horizontal antenna. There have been occasions when I've relied solely on a vertical antenna. We'll come back to the reason for that perhaps a bit later in this video. But when I've done comparisons with horizontal antennas and vertical antennas, I've always been somewhat puzzled that the horizontal antenna seems to work better, and better in situations where you would think the vertical antenna would work. I've never fully understood that, but I suspect the reason is, and I've covered this again in a recent video, is that a lot of DX depends on multi-hop um, multi propagation and therefore we don't actually need really low angle radiation on a lot of contacts. The higher angle of radiation works because it's a multi-hop um, path and because the horizontal antenna, although it may be not as high as perhaps we'd, we'd like it to be or I'd like it to be, 
It's got an angle of radiation of around about 30, perhaps 35 degrees, something like that. Um, quite healthy radiation at that, that sort of angle. Um, and you would expect that you would really need a lower angle of radiation for some of these DX contacts. But because it's multi-hop, it seems to me that we actually don't need such low angle radiations that sometimes we imagine we need. Don makes the point that uh, he's found that uh, horizontal antennas work better than vertical antennas on 20 meters and above. And uh, well, I, I can sort of identify with that. Um, I mean, 40 meters is an interesting band actually, because 40 meters is widely used. Um, it, it's a, it's a, it's basically open all day, 24 hours a day. Doesn't close at all. Um, during the day, it tends to be short skip, and therefore uh, we need high angle radiation. And if you've got a lowish horizontal antenna and you're operating on 40 meters, it's probably ideal for um, short skip contacts. So when I say short skip, it's not only within the UK where I'm located, it could be into uh, Western Europe and so forth. Uh, it's basically that's all short skip. And of course a low horizontal antenna does give high angle radiation, which is ideal for those sort of contacts. And it's ideal for when the band is open during the day, because predominantly it's open for short skip only. And uh, if you have a vertical antenna, we know that the vertical antenna has got a very deep null vertically. There's very little vertical radiation from a vertical antenna. And therefore the horizontal antenna on 40 meters will, will perform hands down on those short daytime contacts. Here's a good example during the day on 40 meters. Uh, first you'll hear the signal on my horizontal antenna and then you'll hear the signal on my vertical antenna. Take a listen. So let's see what was happening here. We've got the earth beneath us and then this is very roughly the pattern of uh, vertical radiation from my horizontal antenna which is uh, not that high really, fairly low. And then let's draw the pattern of the vertical. This is a typical pattern, the vertical is not quite accurate but it gives you the basic idea. And I think the signal was coming from this direction here. So it was strong on the dipole, but very weak on the vertical. So that was 40 meters. Now I'm going to change to 20 meters. Again, switching from the horizontal to the vertical. But this time, there's very little difference between the two antennas. <laughs> Let me show you what I think was happening on 20 meters. We've got the ground and let me draw the typical radiation pattern of a lowish dipole. You can see it's predominantly high angle radiation, not a very good drawing, but it's, you get the idea. And now perhaps we'll draw in the radiation pattern of the vertical. And that comes out in a lobe roughly like that, maybe a bit more bulbous. There's a point where I suspect that the signal is coming in at that sort of angle. And that sort of angle, the dipole and the vertical are going to get similar signals. And I think that's what was happening. It's a different matter in the evening. There we have DX contacts and there we benefit from lower angle radiation. But even then, I've often found that uh, my horizontal uh, antenna works better than my vertical. <laughs> There's not complete logic to this, but I'm talking about a span of 60 odd years of operation and that is what I've found. If you're fortunate enough, you've got two antennas in the garden, one, well, you could have two horizontal antennas or one vertical, one horizontal. It's interesting to do A-B tests. If you've got an antenna switch, um, switch quickly between 
uh, one and t'other. It's no good unplugging one and plugging the other one in. That's not quick enough. You need to be able to switch A and B. And the interesting way of doing that, to get a real uh, feel for the difference between the two antennas on a particular band or a particular time of day, is to throttle the RF gain back so that the automatic gain control is no longer operating. Now I'm currently using uh, a Yesu FT710 and if you turn the RF gain back you'll see the S meter go up and you want to adjust that RF gain so that the S meter is no longer active. So let me, let me explain. You, you may be listening to a signal saying S7 on the, on the meter and it will be going up and down because of QSB and so forth. Well, rotate the RF gain control until the meter is just beyond, just higher than S7, which means say the AGC is no longer taking control of the receiver. And then do your AB test. And you want to do an AB test so that your S meter is always stable. In other words, the AGC is off and the S meter is just above, or the S meter position is just above the strongest signal. Then do your AB test. And you will then really hear the difference between those two signals. If you do an A-B test with the AGC operating, it's it's not really, doesn't really give you the full effect. But it's quite surprising. Rotate that RF gain control back so the AGC is not operating, then do your A-B test, and you will then get a very good idea of the difference on the signal when you switch between one antenna and the other. Try it. It's quite interesting. So let's, let's go back to the the best antenna for your QTH. Well, the best antenna you would think would be the antenna that's the most efficient. And it it, it sort of favors what you want to do with your work DX or local stations. But really and truly, practicalities come into this. If you can just about squeeze a horizontal antenna in, but it's a bit of a problem, you don't quite know how to support it, etc., etc., and you think the neighbors are gonna complain, but you put a vertical in, which is much easier to install. If you can put radials and bury them in the grass and it's, it's less visible, then you will possibly get less performance on that vertical, but it's gonna do what you want. It's gonna give you contacts. And I suppose really and truly, we do with antennas sometimes, oh, I suppose me included sometimes, you get sort of hyped up about, you want to have the strongest signal. Well. I suppose you want to have the strongest signal because it means to say that perhaps you'll be first in the queue or at the front of the queue. But really and truly, that's not actually what a lot of people want. They just want to have some contacts. And they want to have some contacts with an antenna that works, but an antenna that fits in their garden. So if one antenna is 3 dB less than the other, does it really matter? It's probably, does, probably not even noticeable. Even 6 dB is not that different. It's one S point. All right, so you won't be in the front of the queue, but you'll be in the queue and you'll probably get served eventually. And if the queue's too long, you, you move off and go somewhere else where there's no queue at all. And I've had some excellent contacts on antennas which are not particularly efficient, but they've, they've served their purpose and it fits into my particular garden. I spent quite a few years actually in a smallish garden with a vertical antenna. Now, I had nothing to compare it with. I suspect that if I'd had a horizontal wire on a lot of contacts, I'd have got better signals and I'd have got further. But I didn't have anything to compare it with. And it didn't particularly worry me. In fact, probably it's better you can't make the comparison. <laughs> and then you're, you're not, uh, you don't get too much anxiety about uh, whether the antenna's working properly and why it's not working as best as the other one. Um, I had a lot of contacts with the vertical antenna. I was quite happy with it. So really and truly, it's nice to talk about antennas and it's nice to go for the best and the most efficient, but there are times when is that really the most important thing? For a lot of ham radio operators, the most important thing is to get on the air and make some contacts. And you know, you can be using an antenna which is not particularly wonderful, but you're there at the right time. I've had a couple of contacts recently where for whatever reason, I've just been at a time where the guy has just fired up, called CQ once, got no replies, uh, quite a DX station, and I've jumped in and, give, and given him a call, had a short contact with him, 
and then the whole world descends on you because obviously people have been alerted it's there and i had another contact similarly the other day and i just happened to be around at the right time and i was able to work this station i wouldn't have stood an earthly once the whole world had descended on so really and truly the best antenna for you is not only the one that is most efficient it's the one that will fit into your garden and give you what you want within your own limitations don't be worried about somebody says oh well, i wouldn't put that up because that won't work and i wouldn't put it up because that won't work all antennas work and it's a question of enjoying ham radio we all need an antenna but enjoying ham radio don't get too het up with antennas i mean i will keep pumping out videos from time to time about antennas you can try and so forth and how this might be better than the other but it may be interesting reading or interesting watching but it doesn't mean to say you've got to do it we learn an awful lot by watching um, and our own experience my own experience says that generally speaking a horizontal antenna is better than the vertical but if i couldn't get a horizontal antenna up i'd be quite happy with a vertical at the moment i've got a hustler 4b tv love it i've had a 4b t in my garden now not this particular one but i've had several uh, in my garden over the years i love it they're great they're simple antennas they work extremely well they'll take a kilowatt of power under the new license regulations but there are times when my horizontal antenna works better and i accept that it's you know one of those things but it's interesting to ponder why and so forth anyway that's my take on antennas the best antenna for you the best antenna for you is the one that gives you what you want within your own limitations of your garden or as we say in, the, in america the backyard some people in america say why do you talk about gardens we have backyards or so do we really we have grass on our backyards i'm sure that, i'm sure you do in the states as well anyway thanks for watching this video hope you've enjoyed it hope you've looked at the previous videos recently i'll put the one about propagation I'll uh, put a link to the one about propagation um, under this video and also the one about uh, the the low angle radiation or the absence of low angle radiation from vertical antenna. I'll put a link to that as well. In the meantime, thanks for your support on this channel. It's much appreciated. And also thanks for your support in the shop and on the website. Much appreciated. In the meantime, you enjoy your home radio. You take care. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.